This is video five of making the pig dice game. Okay, so where we left last time, I could not get this line to work. I could not load up my file, which was in the package pig resources. So I did a lot of stuff and I tried a lot of things. Eventually I found something that worked and then I went back to what I had before and now, now this works. I am astounded. I don't understand why, but hey, I'm seeing that image there. That's exactly what I wanted. I don't know what fixed it. Maybe I had something spelled wrong along the way, but here is another way to do it. I found a reference to this. It said, go, go make a file out of what you have and then turn that file into a really long uh, name because this is the local reference for it. This is the relative path. This is going to give you the absolute path. And so you can give it a relative path and it works with file, but then it turns it into a full, okay, users slash Goodrich slash where do I keep my projects slash this slash that. And that's the full thing. I didn't want to type all that out before. And, and now, strangely, I don't have to. I have no idea what changed, but we're good. This is the simple way. It worked. Okay, so now let's add in the things where it knows what the status of the game is. Initialize comes through and sets the die image. Well, there's a lot of things that have to happen, right? I actually want to talk to P1 turn set your text to be talk to the game, right? I want to talk to pig dot get p1 dot get turn score. Now it says, wait, that's a squiggle. You have an integer, but I need a string. And so we can make it a string by doing a simple adding of an empty string. And that says, oh, empty string plus number becomes a string and it's happy. Okay, copy paste again, P2, not yet, P1, total, oh, thanks IntelliJ, P2 turn, P2 total, but don't forget over here, talk to player two and get their total score and get their total score. Now this looks similar to our main method. We were making our game. Don't forget down here we were saying, well, let's print those things out to the screen. We want to see what's on the die and we want to see those pieces. Well, here's how we do it in the controller where we're talking to the die image. We're talking to those pieces and setting their text as it goes. So. Let's see if this works. And we get a bunch of zeros. Yes, at the beginning of the game, everything is a zero. Perfect. Okay, so next thing we want to do is make it so that the buttons work. We have our buttons over here that we have to find roll button and hold button. We could set up their, well, we, we'll do this in two ways. One thing we could do is I could say roll button dot set on action. I want to do stuff. I am going to call a method called roll. So public void roll, what should that do? It needs to go to our game and roll the die. So pig roll the die. Well, after we roll, we want to update the screen. 
Now these five lines are really updating the screen. I'm going to turn them into a new method here. Public void update views. These five things. And that's really what I want to have down here. Update the views. And since it's a method, well, I can do it after I roll. I click on roll, update the views. I click on roll, update the views. So this should set up that when the event happens, call roll. And this is the way we want to do it programmatically. Let's see if it works here. Roll. Roll. Look at that. Okay. That's the biggest score in pig yet. Oh, here's a zero, and it wiped it out. And now this number should be updating when I click roll. Two, four, seven, ten, twelve, sixteen, twenty-two, twenty-four, twenty-nine. Up, oh, turn over. Okay, eventually your luck runs out. You're gonna get a one eventually. And This is a great way to do it if there's stuff we want to do. If roll button was created dynamically, if we're clicking on images that we're putting on the screen as we code. But really, this is overkill because it exists out there in Scene Builder. And Scene Builder can help us. We could say, hey, roll on action. Notice it's the same thing here. I want to do the roll. So if I save that, even though this is commented out here, roll is now accessible, and I should still be able to roll. Here we go. Great. Okay, so let's do the same thing. Public void hold. Call the hold on the game and then update the views. So this controller again, because we did so much in the model, this controller is telling the model what to do and then, hey, updating the views based on how the model changed. So the model view controller idea is really coming across here as we put this together. Okay, so let's see if we can play the game again. And sometimes I can click on hold now. Roll, turn over, roll, oh, well, that's enough. Hold. Hold doesn't do anything. Why not? Because we forgot to go to Scene Builder. Hold. You need your action to be hold. Save that and now our connection should work. Scene Builder can be great, I like it. We have to remember to save, and we have to remember to actually do it. We can't just assume it's all going to work magic. So, five, nine, time to hold. A nine showed up here, great. Roll, your turn is over. Roll, five, nine, 18. Your turn, three, six, 10, hold. Perfect, okay. It's hard to tell whose turn it is. Let's change that up. So back in the controller, what I'd like to do is, as in my example, change it so there's a green background on whoever's turn it is. So we have to talk to those V boxes. Uh, P1 box. And, oh yes, import the glass. Same thing here for the player two V box. Then here's what we want to be doing with them. Inside our update views, this is not gonna change, but we have something new. We wanna say, hey, if it's player one's turn,
then I want to be updating the screen in a certain way. So let's talk to the VBox around player one things. And I want to set your background to be a new background. And a background is based on a new, uh, you can make it an image. I'm going to make it a fill. And it's going to be light green. And then there's other parameters which we can ignore to give us what we need. Oh, I don't know what color it is yet. Now I do. Good. So, if it's not your turn, player two, it's not your turn, your background is going to be empty, which is what it is now. Okay, so, when it's not player two's, player one's turn, I want the background to be light green for player two. Now let's see if this indicator works for me. Oh, it does not. And why not? Again, we forgot to go talk to Scene Builder, didn't we? So, Scene Builder needs to say, Ah, where are you? I want this vertical box. You get to be the player one box. This vertical box gets to be the player two box. Okay, save the changes. And we're back. Let's try to run it again. Yay! Okay, a green indicator over here. It's player one's turn. Oh, huh, player two's turn. Look at that changing back and forth. Okay. And see if we can get a lot of points here. There we go. So things are coming together to make our game. Now, the last piece I want to do in the next video is talking about the animation. How can we get that die to roll? That's going to be where we add in that animation timer. And we'll see how that happens in the next video.